Hi everyone, Guy from Midwinter Minis here. In this episode of our Blackstone Fortress speed painting series, we're going to be painting up the Cultists and Firebrand nice and quickly using simple techniques and our usual selection of 14 basic paints. You can find the list of paints we used and a few alternative colours in the description as always. Now I think these minis are totally awesome, but I have to say putting them together was a real pain. They're push fit models, and while that's incredibly impressive given their dynamic poses, they have so many little wiggly bits hanging off them that I almost broke about three of the models during assembly, especially on the Firebrand. If you haven't built yours already, just take a little bit more care when pushing the pieces together. To tie the bases in with the rest of my set, I stuck some little triangles of paper to the bases to cover the slotter grooves, added a few bits of aquarium gravel here and there, and applied sand to mimic the sparse debris of the Blackstone Fortress tiles. I think it's quite important to keep any basing elements you add quite random, placing them in too uniform a way, say by always having a piece of debris between their legs, just looks a little bit too monotonous. To give our paint something to stick to, and to quickly block in all the hard to reach shadowy parts, I primed all the models with a black spray primer. Once that had dried, I gave them all a light blast of white spray primer directly from above, and this is a really rapid way of killing two birds with one stone. First you create some easy pre-shading so that the slightly transparent colours will appear more vibrant on the top of the model, and second you'll be able to see the detail of the model more clearly than if it was just black all over. Also for most of the video I'm going to be trying out a couple of new brushes from the Artist's Loft Necessities range, a big beefy size 6 and a size 2. Now before you think I've gone all swanky and sold out a big brush, these cost about $9.99 for a set of 12 brushes from Hobbycraft so they're still crazy cheap. The first base colour we're going to lay down on all the models is a deep tan flesh tone. It's easy to make with our basic paint choice, just mix khaki and brown in a 1 to 1 ratio. Thin it with a bit of water so we take advantage of that pre-shading and paint all the areas of skin on the models. Don't forget the cheeky bits of their exposed chins under their masks, their ears and exposed midriffs under their armour. Here's a quick tip, when you're batch painting models like this, line them up left to right and paint along the line. When you finish the last one, you can be pretty sure that the model at the other end will be dry and ready for the next colour. And for this scheme, that next colour will be a desaturated brown. We'll make it by mixing grey paint and brown paint in equal parts. Thin it with a little bit of water and use this to paint their trousers. Don't forget to try to hit any of the bits of leg that are hidden under their battle skirt things and stop before you paint over the boots or any of the fabric wraps that cover the boots. For most of this base coating I'm going to be creating a sort of evolving palette, creating a new tone by simply adding colour upon colour in the same cup of my palette. This will keep the whole colour scheme nice and complementary and quite balanced. To show you what I mean, we'll add some purple into that desaturated brown we just made for the trousers. Doing this will take a bit of the edge off the purple's vibrancy and we'll use this new colour to base coat the battle skirts. Do your best to paint up the insides of them too, but if you can't see the area with your eye, don't worry too much about it, we're speed painting after all. Once you've gone through each model and finished up with the purple, add some red into your purple mix to create a really rich, jammy, fruity colour, and we're going to use this colour to paint all of the model's straps and bindings. Take a little time to try and catch all the straps that hold their armour on, as well as the wraps around their wrists and boots. I'm still using this big fat size 6 brush, but if you want to use a smaller one, that's totally fine. If you get any on the skin by mistake, don't worry too much about it right now because we can fix it later. I also use this colour to paint the little sacks and bags on the models as well as the pipe on the Firebrand's flamer. Next I added some black into that jammy red colour to make a deep warm brownie black and used this colour to paint all of their boots. Now it's time to paint up their ornate, fancy looking armour plates. So to make a colour for this, I added two drops of gold paint to that dark browny black on the palette. 
and this made a really deep, dirty bronze colour, a perfect base coat to build up to a brighter shine later on. Every model has one or two armour panels that need to be hit with this colour, and the Firebrand obviously has lots of armour to base coat, his main ornamental body armour, as well as the plates on his forearms and shins. Okay, so first paint for a while that we're using straight with no blending, and that's silver. Thin it so it flows nicely, and paint all the guns, grenades, and other war gear the cultists are carrying, as well as the cabling on the Firebrand's flamer. You might also want to catch the weird little matrix style ports and staples the cultists have on their skin too. Once you're happy with your silver stage, go back to the first colour we mixed for the skin. Mine was still wet on the palette, but you might need to mix it again if you're not doing this in one sitting, and use this to tidy up the little mistakes you made with other colours hitting their exposed skin. Mistakes are inevitable when speed painting, but tidying up afterwards is a much better way of using your time than being overly careful early on. Once you're happy everyone's skin is looking their best, mix some white into that skin tone, and with this desaturated, creamy coffee colour, we're going to paint the horns and the teeth that some of the cultists have on their helmets and armour. When you've taken care of the horny cultists, add a drop of blue into that creamy colour we just used, and mix it to create a nice pastel blue. We're going to be using this to paint the decorative hair that flops out of two of the cultists' helmets. Now, I'm going to add a drop of yellow paint to that pastel blue to create an interesting, quite vibrant green colour. This is what I'm going to be using to paint the big gouts of flame pouring out of the Firebrand's weapon. If you want to paint this a normal flame colour, follow the simple wet blending guide in the Pious Vaughan video we made a few months ago. While the vibrant green is still wet on the flame, I applied some straight yellow onto the sharpest bits of the flame, wiped off the paint from my brush, and quickly blended the two colours together to make the transitions less obvious. Practicing wet blending on stuff like flames is a really good idea, because there's no details to obscure, so you can just keep going and going until you're happy with the result. If you're following the same basing technique as me, the next steps you'll want to take care of are painting the debris with grey paint, and then giving the surface of the base and the rims their first coat of black. So that's all the base coats out of the way. I did them all in one sitting, so I took the dog for a little walk and had a little break, and came back when the paint was thoroughly dry. And once they're ready, it's time for the wash stage. To keep things simple, we're going to mix water, brown wash, and black wash in equal parts to make a slightly thinner colour that will complement all the paints that we've previously used, and apply it all over the model. The only exception is to leave the flame of the firebrand alone, we want to keep it nice and bright. Clothes, skin, armour, horns, weapons, even the blue hair should get a coat of this wash. Use a dry brush to wick away any excess that pools too much in the recesses, otherwise you'll get some dodgy looking tide marks. And once that's done, give it about an hour to dry. And once they're dry, if you just can't wait to start using these models in the game, you could totally call the speed paint portion of this tutorial done. Grim, dark and dirty. By batch painting and quickly mixing colours as you go, this was accomplished in just over 3 hours of hands-on painting time. That's about 25 minutes a model. As always in our Blackstone Fortress series, we'll show you a few slightly more advanced, but still pretty easy ways you can bring this paint job to the next level. But before we do, a huge thanks to Whammo and Elijah, our two newest patrons. Thanks to our little gang of supporters, we're able to keep stocked of models, paints and supplies, and dog treats to keep the channel going. If you want to see your name in lights, and chat with us on Discord, follow the link in the description to find out more about our Patreon. Right, let's get back to the painting. For the next step, you'll want to use a small, slightly ruined brush. We're going to be using this to dry brush the armour panels, so a smaller brush will help us keep the paint off the areas around the armour. Get some gold paint on your brush, work nearly all of the paint off on something absorbent like paper, and gently buff the gold onto the armour plates and helmets.
Be a bit considerate of what angle you approach the armor panels at. Try to avoid accidentally brushing over any skin if you can. Next, we'll do the exact same thing, but with silver paint this time, and we'll focus on the weapons and war gear. And while you've got your silver paint out, you can use a finer brush to pick out some of the metal rings that their straps attach to, as well as any of the little trinkets they have hanging around. Once you're happy all those metallics are nice and shiny, mix up your original deep tan flesh colour again, and using a smaller brush, catch the prominent muscles and top facing parts of their skin. Don't go into any of the recesses, just take your time highlighting the big muscle groups. If the angle is too awkward or the flesh is hidden in the shadows, just don't bother. We're going for quick and effective, not long and laboured. Once those muscles have had their first highlight, add a little white to your skin tone and use this colour to add a little streak or dot of highlight to each of the muscles you just picked out. This will give the impression of a sort of sweaty sheen to their skin and make it look much more vibrant. Now we're going to add some purple to that skin colour and create a sort of a lilac, which would be just a tiny bit brighter than the original purple that we used to paint their battle skirts. Use this to just pick out the sharpest points of the folds in the fabric, as well as any areas that are being pushed out by the billowing movement or rising knees. By using small streaking motions and following the movement of the skirt thing, it'll retain a bit of a tatty, worn look. Finally, I mixed blue and white together to create a highlight for the hair and just gently applied it to some of the pointier strands using the edge of my brush. And used pure yellow to do the same thing of the warp flame on the Firebrand model. And there we go. In about four and a half hours of hands-on painting time, the Escalation Cultists and the Firebrand are ready to overwhelm your explorers in the Blackstone Fortress. And this colour scheme would also work great for any of the regular Chaos Cultists and their champions too, and it would actually probably look pretty awesome on the new Corpse Grinder cult from Necromunda Dark Uprising as well. And by the way, thanks to our awesome patrons, we were able to pick up that box set too, so expect some pretty cool Necromunda videos in the near future. Back to the Cultists? We'll be leaving the bases black for now, because we'll be batch painting all of the bases of the models in the Dreaded Amble, Traitor Guard and Escalation expansions in one go. If you want to check out my quick and easy method for painting the bases, check out this video that just popped up. I realise I've obviously referenced a few different episodes in this video, so I've made a list of some useful links for you. You can find them in the video description and also pinned in the comments. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'll leave you with a nice little showcase of the individual models. Thank you so much for watching everyone, please subscribe if you'd like to see more Midwinter Mini stuff in the future, and bye for now.